So it's, uh, it's three o'clock on the nose, everybody. So uh, I'm going to go for uh, strict timekeeping as much as we can. Um, so welcome to uh, Composer Coffee Break number three. Thanks so much for, for joining in. And um, uh, I've got two or three little uh, housekeeping messages just to, um, uh, to start us off today. One is an apology about, uh, about the time zone naming. Uh, I did say it was uh, 3 p.m. GMT, which clearly is not right. It's 3 p.m. British summertime. Um, so for our American uh, friends or actually anybody else who's not in the UK, uh, if you're not watching this, I'm very sorry. Uh, do catch up on YouTube later. So, so that's a, a virtual apology for later. Uh, it will always be 3 p.m. UK or London time. Um, the second announcement is just a reminder about the chat message. The chat is incredibly valuable and actually I do um, take the archive of the whole chat and post it on my website later today. So if anybody sees anything that's interesting and it whizzes past too quickly or they just want to review that chat, that will be available on my website hopefully by tomorrow morning. Uh, and then the third one is uh, just a, a little mention of two of the many excellent schemes that are being set up by different musicians and different people in, in TV and production at the moment. Um, there are lots of dis uh, different schemes that are being set up and, and one of my hopes is that over the next few weeks we can all work together to try and consolidate some of these. Um, but at the moment the, uh, there's a, a couple that I wanted to point out. Uh, one which has been set up um, which is a, a session musician scheme and uh, uh, the ability to register yourself as a remote recording artist or uh, a mix engineer or various other uh, bits and pieces. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the noises off there, that's uh, Claire's uh, uh, animal collection, I believe dogs. Could be anything, could be a dinosaur or something. Um, so uh, Nanita Desai uh, set up a, a scheme already. I'm going to copy her Twitter address onto the, uh, onto the chat. So hopefully everybody can see that down there. Uh, do follow Nanita on Twitter and find out more about this scheme that she's running at the moment, which is an open Google Doc for, um, uh, as I say, musicians to register. Also, if so, if you uh, either want to register or want to find some musicians or other people in the music team, then that's a great place to look. Uh, and the second one, which um, depending on who you follow on Twitter, you may or may not have come across, uh, Donna Tarborough who is uh, the current head of talent at the BBC, is uh, doing some extraordinary work uh, setting up skills training for the whole of um, TV and film production. I've put her Twitter handle down at the, on the chat as well. Now, um, that's not strictly relevant, all of it, to, to composers, but I uh, strongly recommend you follow her because she's managing to bring together some really big hitters in film and TV at the moment and setting up some training schemes. So whether or not you, you sign up for all of them, um, uh, she's a really good example, I think, of, of people who are trying to pull together really great courses and really great um, people to uh, pull them together in, in, under an umbrella organization. So she's very much worth a follow. Um, so onto our three amazing guests that we, that we have uh, today. So um, I, <laughs> this is a point where, where I kind of move the camera around and that's where somebody's always eating or, or having a cup of tea. So I've got Catherine Greaves, who is uh, an amazing music supervisor. There she is. Yay! Uh, Catherine Hi. and I uh, worked together for many years when she was at Hot House Music. And then subsequently she's been to Faber, where she is um, setting the world alight, uh, music supervising and also working as a composer agent rather brilliantly. Um, so Catherine will be... Uh, helping us uh, towards the end of the of the session, you know, um, and giving us her take on how much trouble we're all in and what we might <laughs> what we might do about it. So thanks, <laughs> Catherine, for coming along. Much appreciated. Uh, Harriet Moss, uh, Harriet, we know from last week, um, but uh, Harriet will be filling us in in the middle of the session about the wonderful um, mentoring scheme that uh, that we talked about. That uh, there's been a terrific response in the hundreds of people already signed up uh, so we'll go through yeah, how it, isn't it amazing i mean the, I, I think we was, everybody really was really quite shocked 263 sign up so far 
<laughs> two six three that's actually nuts um yeah and, and so we'll be able to have a chat in the middle of this session uh, about some of the logistics there how we might slightly rebalance between people who've signed up as mentors and signed up as mentees um, but also harriet will be able to describe some of the process to us uh, of where we go next um yeah but just a huge shout out to everybody on the chat um obviously we uh, just with the number of people who are joining us we can't necessarily uh answer every question or, or acknowledge everything that goes past but i think via the mentoring scheme we hopefully will be able to have uh what we've been describing as a as a network effect of people uh who can actually uh give one one-to-one -one attention rather than just this sort of um uh, slightly more um uh broadcast scenario that, that we're doing here but then also we can, supported, yeah yeah that that's it and and, and we can as as harriet said we can uh, make sure that we come back on a monday to uh, to check in and and see how we're all doing so i think we'll definitely be brilliant uh and then uh, we're very privileged to have claire jarvis join us now um i've uh of all the organizations that certainly that I'm uh, both a member of and uh, and have been associated with over, over the years, uh, PRS for Music is is the one that is uh, easily the most structurally important to me financially and to all the composers that I know. It's also, uh, I think, because of its size and scale, has been, uh, and the way it's constituted, one of the strongest supporters of the musician community. And so uh, Claire is director of membership. Uh, Claire, if, I, if I'm not doing you a, a disservice to say that uh, there's, there's been 20 years of experience at the BBC and then uh, as director of music at Sky, if I, if I have my facts, right. facts, straight, yeah. facts straight in this one. So we're incredibly yeah. grateful to have, to have Claire with us today. Um, I, I wanted to actually uh, dive straight in with you, Claire, if I could, because I know that you have to go relatively soon. Um, and the first thing that I uh, wanted to, to hear from you really is, is about the schemes that PRS uh, either have in existence or particularly uh, in the case of the Emergency Relief Fund have managed to put together at, at very short notice. And so it'd be wonderful maybe if you, if you could outline a little about, about that for us. Of course, happy to do that. Um, as you can probably gather, um, we have been working very, very hard to try and reach out um, to our both our PRS Members Fund and also to the PRS Foundation to see what we could do um, in, in order to literally give um, a relief straight away to those who are most in need. Um, and having worked at great speed we were able to launch what we call the prs emergency relief fund um and it will be there it's set up to offer grants of up to a thousand pounds per person depending on need now it will be effectively administered by the prs um members fund because they're obviously already set up to help um uh prs members who in the past have got into difficulty um and they are, as we speak, literally processing the first uh, set of applications. There's no, um, uh, no great uh, surprises there to know that we were pretty much inundated straight away with a lot of people saying we are definitely struggling. Um, and the idea is that um, in order to qualify, you have to be a PRS member writer for at least two years. You have to have earned at least 500 pounds of PRS royalties within the last two years. And then you have to go through the PRS Members Fund, almost like means testing, but very light touch means testing, just so that we can be absolutely sure we're directing this money um, to the right people. Um, I don't know if anybody else wants to know anything more about it than that. I mean, you can go to the PRS website where it will give you much, far more detail about this. Um, but that is something that's there. It's literally there for people who are literally staring down the barrel of a gun thinking, I, I don't have any, enough money to buy food. I don't have enough money to pay rent. Yeah. Um, so the plea, the plea I would put out to the composer community is, is that please think about whether you do need to ask for that money um, or whether you've got an, a temporary alternative um, source to turn to um, because 
you know, as um, uh, Michael, you've said, you know, we are a very large organization, but we cater for a very large membership from everybody who's, you know, just starting through all the way through to um, the Elton John's, Ed Sheeran's, Paul McCartney's. Uh, uh, Claire, I think uh, one of the things when, when I heard about, uh, about the relief fund that came to mind for me was that where it sits in the, the overall um, kind of structural network of, of um, finances that flow through from PRS. So yes. on, the, on the, the one hand, the, the main function uh, of PRS is to, uh, is to collect and distribute royalties. And, and is there a sense from you, I know that, um, that I mean, I felt actually that the communications from, from PRS have been great about the changes in, in working so, um, so we heard, I'm sure that everybody has, is working from home and that was sort of trialed so that the April distribution still looks like it's on, on target in terms of uh, dates. Is, is that still holding true? Absolutely. Um, just with your first point, um, we have um, established ourselves very quickly to be business as usual, pretty much all working from home. There have been virtually no glitches on that. A few technical difficulties, as, <laughs> as you might have expected to begin with, but we've settled into a rhythm now. That's and amazing. absolutely, you know, the thing that we decided very early on was that the greatest benefit we can be to you guys and girls um, is to ensure that the royalties are processed and, and paid. And actually, we set about securing and protecting the revenue to to the extent we can given that you know there's a, a lot going on and a lot to come uh, in various sects in various sectors so for sure the april distribution will run on the 15th it, it was pretty much done and uh, done and dusted and sort of in the bag so in terms of amount of royalties that were coming in um uh, there was no impact on that and what we've tried to do also is to put as much uh, focus on live uh, royalties as we can in the April distribution and individual members should be able to see what they're getting um, uh, on, on or around the 8th of April. Um, so it sounds a long way to wait but it's coming and we're pretty certain that we've done absolutely everything we can to make sure it's, it's, it's one of the largest dis April distributions we've ever had. Amazing. Can you, uh, gazing into a crystal ball, uh, <laughs> I won't hold it to it, although we are being recorded. Uh, that uh, talking to composer colleagues, uh, that there's a sense of, of trying to look further down the the track. Um, we all we all know realistically that the sh that w whatever kind of shutdown we'll find ourselves in is going to be measured in months rather than weeks, and uh, mm -hmm. It, it sort of feels like talking to the composers over the last couple of weeks that different sectors are being uh, impacted in, in slightly different ways. So, for mm -hmm. instance, if you if your majority of your income was from live, then you've just stopped playing, you've just stopped touring. So that will kind of um, filter through the system or rather the lack of that will filter through relatively quickly. If, on the other hand, you might be a composer with a lot of uh, library music already embedded into a lot of um, reality and documentaries, then those things are still going to be showing and still uh, filtering through so that it will be a longer tail. I mean, do, mm -hmm. you, do you have any sort of, uh, any general thought, thoughts as to, as, as to how, how things might play out over the next uh, six to 12 months? Um, we, of course, we are working very hard to try and model that as best we can. And in particular, we we will have to talk to uh, in some detail with the PPE P, uh, can't speak PRS PPL joint venture to see what modelling they're doing um, uh, on what they think is going to happen on live. Um, the early indications are there could be an impact in July. There shouldn't have been. There shouldn't be an impact in April. Uh, there might be some impact in July, but the, probably one of the key points is going to be the October distribution. Um, and as you've rightly pointed out, in other areas, um, the, it, it's, it's a different um, sort of direction of travel altogether because, yes, on broadcast, some things, uh, production has been paused, some might be cancelled, sure. etc. But the, the, all of the main broadcasters are continuing to broadcast 
okay, maybe with different schedules, but as you say, there will already be music embedded in, in, in them, in their, uh, programs so that will be a bit more difficult to model because of that because we don't actually have the visibility of what they're going to replace <laughs> programs with i i hope they're just going to play sherlock just on a loop for the, for the majority <laughs> of the time that that seems perfectly sensible to me um yeah. one of the things that we're that we're trying to think about uh today as as we're all chatting is not necessarily about some of some of us uh slightly more dinosaur uh composers but people on their, on their way up and coming. I mean, are there any practical pieces of advice maybe that you've got in terms of using this time to clean up registrations or to, to make sure that, that you're getting every penny you're entitled to as a young composer? Well, I, I think it applies to everybody, to be honest, but particularly to those who've just started, um, who, may, who may not be quite as adept as, 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 as others at, at, at helping us keep the money going, basically. That's our mantra moment. We've got to keep the money going. So try and make sure you're up to date on registering your works. Try and make sure that your account details are as up to date as possible. Those two things alone will help you get, get what money you're entitled to as quickly as possible. And again, in the broadcast world, something as simple as make, trying to make sure that all of the cue sheets are there and they are accurate is only going to go, um, as I say, to help us keep the money going, which is our mantra for today. I have to say, one of the things that uh, on a rainy Thursday afternoon, we sometimes go through once a, once a year at my place is the is the matching up of unclaimed items on the on the yes. PRS website. Where if yes. you've not had a go at it, folks, it's it's quite a lot of fun because there, there's a little sort of other three pounds or two pounds or one pounds little symbol next to it, which suggests how much money there may or may not be lurking for you in something that's incorrectly named. So yes. I I think in a, in a way. Um, there, there's going to be a, a sort of a, a process, I think, for, for, for composers in, in general, where we, we're going to be um, finding our, our, our feet over in the next, um, next few weeks and months about what's possible once this burst of enthusiasm and, and, uh, and shock wave really has, has, yeah. has sort of passed through. And, and so uh, one of the things that, that uh, I personally will be will be encouraging and and uh, trying to um, uh, keep going behind the scenes is is sustainable wave of communication at all levels in these in these new forms, which is is why Claire, it's great to have you here today, and yeah. maybe I can collect some feedback from um, from various people in terms of uh, of extra questions that they might have, so that yeah. rather than there being single touches. Then, then we can uh, keep keep a, a relatively constant dialogue. I think will be important. No, I, I think that's 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 really good. I was going to say just to add on, um, you know, those who uh, thought that their career was just about to take off, etc. Uh, we will be having a look at. Um, we've got our outreach team who are there to help. Uh, those uh, individuals and we're going to have a meeting probably within 10 days to see how they can reach out and actually individually interact with um, that that segment of our membership um, but I absolutely agree with you that what we should do is keep up a continuous dialogue um, I'm very happy if I can't make these sessions I've got Tony Barton who can um, who's the head of uh, writer support and relationships and or Miles Keller, who's out in the US, um, well, in fact, he's in Canada now, but we, we can field somebody to, to try and keep the, the, you know, the flow of information going from both, both ways. And I was gonna ask if anybody's got any ideas as to what we can do other than keep the money going. Um, we're, we're all ears, because I think we do need to have an all minds approach on this uh, at the moment. And you know, no, no, no suggestion too silly in my book. I, I think it's, uh, that's really, really important because, uh, I, and this is my, my personal view, and, uh, and as this is a chat, everybody feel free to uh, disagree and throw virtual um, uh, soft fruit through the screen. It, just that there, um, o over, the, over the years as I've been um, working in various parts of, parts of the industry, it's always felt that um, uh, constructive engagement with the organizations that we work with for me personally has been the most uh, effective way of um well 
collecting the money that hopefully uh, is due to me from shows, but also building the relationships that help you later on. If you, if you have a challenge, then uh, the, the more that you can constructively engage with organizations, whether it's the Ivers Academy, uh, PRS, PPL, uh, any your local PRO, um, depending on, on whereabouts you are in the world, it's kind of easy to, to chuck stones and, uh, and sometimes, you know, organizations get things wrong. But in general, I, I found particularly with, uh, with, with PRS uh, that I, I have found a good faith from them as an organization. So I would, I'd strongly recommend uh, n not to not be critical where criticism or constructive criticism is, is due, but I think to assume good faith particularly um, because of some of the information that goes around online that's not necessarily uh, easily verifiable and tends to just be some of us letting off steam from time to time. Um, so, so Claire, I really, I really appreciate you actually uh, taking the time to, to come on and, and, and say hello to us like this, but, uh, but I think hopefully it's the, it's the start, uh, the start of this, certainly this leg of the conversation. Um, and, uh, and we'll all try and keep, keep on top of what's, what's happening, see how we go through April and then uh, and probably take it from there. Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely fine with me. Uh, as I say, it, we, we're just be working flat out to keep the money going at the moment. So any ideas that people have of what we can do on top of that uh, would be most welcome. And if, if we, we have the um, you know, resources uh, to do it, then we will do it. Great, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Claire, I know that you have to go uh, soon, sooner rather than later, so feel feel free to yeah. <laughs> feel free to detach yourself at any point without without uh, any okay. uh, any bad feeling. Uh, Catherine, I was I was going to come come to you next. Actually, I did say earlier that I was going to come to you at the end, but I was uh, entirely wrong about my own uh, running order. No change there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, one of the things that that we've been talking about with um, with Claire, but also with pretty much everybody that. Uh, um, that I've been chatting to over the last the last couple of weeks is uh, first of all to to get from you your own personal take on on how things are in your in your part of the industry. Um, maybe uh, I show everybody on the chat. By the way, of whom there are 170 people attending right now, um, will uh, have worked with you or know you. But but maybe you could just give us a, a tiny rundown for the for the microscopically small number of people who don't. Uh, so you, you're currently at uh, music supervising and composer agenting and running the world? Yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, work for Faber Music, who are a, an independent publisher um, and uh, have a small composer agency. Um, so I kind of head up um, the, the film and TV agency side. Um, and I also music supervise um, on TV and film projects as well. So I kind of wear two hats as it were. Um, so kind of interestingly probably can kind of kind of see see how things are working slightly on the inside and also from kind of uh, those projects that I'm not kind of hired on. Also, you know, kind of what the situation is with those. And I have to say it's quite a span at the moment. <laughs> um, so, I mean, so I mean, Kelly Eve's <laughs> just, just so, uh, so um, yeah, I, I supervise uh, Killing Eve, um, which um, has actually just been brought forward by two weeks. So the oh, yeah. series three starts in two weeks' time. We haven't finished finished it yet, so no. <laughs> um, of course, of so um, yeah, so um, that's. I mean, it will be fine. Um, it's going to be on each week, so we should have enough time. So um, the shows that I'm involved with that are in post-production and that um, uh, my composers that are involved with that are in post-production seem to be plowing on um, to some level, at least. Um, there's some situations where um, our final deliveries, um, final mixes are going to be pushed until, you know, the dubbing studios are reopening other you know other situations where we've got to get it out kidding you for example you know people are making that work either remotely or whether one person is going in there's various different um scenarios but on the whole you know everybody's trying to 
keep to our schedules as it were so you know composers delivering on time you know us having everything ready to go basically um other shows that i'm on that were shooting have gone on hiatus um i think the big question is how long this hiatus is going to last um because uh yeah, one show that I'm on, you know, shut down for 12 weeks. Um, that shouldn't have a massive, massive impact um, if we can start it up then. But obviously, as things, you know, progress, it's going to, yeah, we're just going to have to see. Um, did, I think, did you mention that something that I, that you'd had a couple of new jobs come in or inquiries? Well, so, so there is still sort of prospective work. Absolutely. So it's at the moment, it's kind of those films and TV shows that are in kind of pre-production that are already going to be in pre-production at this time that are having those early conversations. So there are certainly situations where, you know, those conversations are happening about music, whether anything comes you know whether those conversations are had but nobody's actually offered a job until everybody knows when it's when it's happening um i think that's probably a likely scenario um but you know as long as conversations are happening then you know i think that's that's good it also depends on the project and it depends who's involved the setup as to whether those musical conversations can be had at this point in pre-production as well um, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of the time everybody needs to wait until they've got their directors on board, they've got everybody in place before they want to have that, that chat. Other situations, you know, people are happy to have those conversations right at the beginning. So at the moment, it's kind of feeling kind of our way around and just kind of speaking to people and just seeing if there are those opportunities where we can start having those conversations and getting music to people if we can. Um, obviously, hopefully there is more time for people to actually listen to show reels um, than, that, than perhaps they would normally, but you know, we can that's only... Really, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's really interesting though, actually, Catherine, because I mean, one of the, the sort of the, the message in a way from uh, uh, certainly the, the kind of shock wave from the first couple of weeks was that uh, we were all, Carly, myself, and uh, Anita, to, to a certain extent, we're, we're all saying that it's mostly about things shutting. And it feels like a couple of weeks in that we're starting to get a sense of some of the things that as composers we can be doing in this, uh, however long this period of time is, but, but in this period of time, because the, the people that we work with, they've, they've not disappeared, they're, they're still... Uh, you know, they're, they're still pr presumably available to communicate with, but just maybe in a different way? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's, um, you know, the conversations and, and especially, you know, we are only three weeks, you know, beginning of the third week into this. Obviously, you know, talking about hiring composers is the last thing that producers are currently trying to <laughs> worry about. They never Having really their, want to talk to us anyway. No, <laughs> I mean, they don't want to anyway, but um, yeah. Uh, so I think there's a lot, you know, those conversations are not suddenly going, yes, we've got loads of time, but there are certain kind of directors and, and people that are working on those projects that I've been in touch with that are going, yes, no, we're, we're in, you know, we're thinking about these things. And it might not be that, you know, everybody's wanting pitches right now, yeah. but hopefully when we have a bit more kind of, of an idea of, of the time scale of this, then, you know, those those conversations can be had so you know i think if you are a composer and and you do have those relationships you know there's no with, with people that you know are intending to make something there's no harm in in saying hello yeah. um so um yeah but I, as i say it's kind of feeling our way through it at the moment it, it's it's very interesting because i think one of the things that uh has a sort of come come up over the last couple of weeks um in in some my conversations has, has been a certain amount of breaking down of, of traditional barriers, uh, for better or worse, in that um, it, it feels like, certainly for some of the filmmakers that, that I've known in a, in a formal kind of work sense for uh, a long time, it, is that there are opportunities to, to connect on a, on a human level at the moment, which I know it probably sounds a bit wishy-washy in the context of a sort of hard-nosed business conversation, but it feels like there, uh, a lot of the relationships that, that I've got with filmmakers 
and that I've had for a long time are there's a certain point where they tip over from being just you're the person that makes some music for them right at the end of their show to you're actually a, a collaborator you, you're potentially a friend you're, you're certainly someone who who is a whole rounded person rather than to in terms of your relationships rather than just someone who, who produces a, a product that could easily be generated by AI. Um, and, um, and again, as, as we were talking with Claire earlier about how, how younger composers can um, uh, keep a sense of continuity in this time when everything's shut down. Is, is, there, is there anything that you think people can do to sort of uh, try and um, both sort of uh, maintain relationships and deepen them or or even just prepare their resilience and, and and increase that for so they're ready for when everything starts back up again yeah that's a hard I, question that's <laughs> like a really long question <laughs> not really a question was it uh, um i mean i do think i mean it's, it's like anything i mean this, this industry is so based on on relationships um anyway that i think you know, use this as an opportunity to say hello to somebody <laughs> and 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 see what's going on and see if there is a way of you know continuing that collaboration in a way as if everything was happening happening normally. Um, yeah, it's it's tricky. I also think that there are um, you know people are looking at how they can kind of um, continue work remotely. You know, I had I was talking to. Sky this morning and you know their whole promo and trailer team have now all set up at home so they're now continuing to do that work that they were doing before so there are still I'm hoping oh, that these things yeah. will will continue yeah. um to some level and it might just take a little bit of work to to be able to set certain things up so um yeah but I also think just finding you know keep talking to each other um and yeah just keep the conversations going i think yeah absolutely <laughs> I, I, it is really hard i mean to, to be fair that there's a sort of uh, i think everybody's finding a kind of balance between uh on the on the one hand the kind of frenetic first couple of weeks activity of of sort of flapping about on we're all playing gigs from home just because it makes us feel better and uh, you know <laughs> and well, here we are chatting on Zoom. Everybody's uh, doing that, but I think in in many ways there's a sort of a, uh, an opportunity. Not that anybody would have wished for it in this way, but there is an opportunity to to build a certain amount of resilience uh, and some of those techniques. In that, this is I think. Well, I can't remember a time that's been as hard as this. Looks like it's going to be, just in terms of the general climate. I mean, the writer strike wasn't this bad. The financial crisis uh, didn't hit film and TV in the same way. So this is a uniquely difficult time. And so consequently, uh, however um, much it makes many of us feel uh, anxious and, uh, and want to drink vast quantities of wine every night, I think actually it will, it will really make a kind of um, uh, the, the, the patterns and the practices that we generate for ourselves at, at the moment, I think will stand us in very good stead uh, when we... Uh, when we all come back out to back out to play again, whenever that is. Um, just a tiny PSA again for everybody using the, the chat. If you change your preference down at where you type into all panelists and attendees rather than just all panelists, then, then everybody can see that because there's some uh, excellent comments that are being made, which um, uh, I don't think all the other attendees are necessarily seeing. Um, so, uh, and as, as Jim, who's a, a lovely old friend says, as people who naturally self-isolate, he's hopeful. And yes, there is hope. There is pl plenty of hope. Uh, Harriet, talking of hope, talking, <laughs> talking of things that are uh, potentially positive and jolly. That's a dodgy Alan Partridge segue. Um, how, how, are we, how are we doing with the, with the mentorship scheme? Uh, great. I have two things to say, first of all. Um, sorry if I haven't replied to your email, even as we're ticking along now i've said another 12 which i'm probably sure is lots of you saying <laughs> so i am doing my best to get back to everybody um 
as soon as possible. The second thing to mention immediately is that we've been asked to keep uh, the applications open, if this is okay, until Wednesday, let's go for Wednesday lunchtime. Right. Um, because there's a couple more organizations um, and publishers that want to share with their rosters, etc. So we really want to do this right, I think, um, or do it the best we can at least. And so we want as many of you to apply as possible. Um, so yeah, we I think we're on 263, did I say, Michael? Um, <laughs> Growing by the minute. One thing to explain, and, and Michael sort of referenced this at the beginning, is um is how how it's going to work and actually it's become apparent in the last couple of days um that we we're going to mold this based on who's applied and how they've applied so one of the, the biggest things we've noticed right from the beginning of opening up opening the applications was how many people want to be mentored rather than um, applying as the mentor and um, i've noticed this with uh I think almost all the mentorship schemes that I've done is that imposter syndrome largely comes into the application process and is something we should tackle um, probably in a sort of format like this um, somewhere along the scheme because there are so many composers out there and there's 170 on the side of my screen here um, that could give so much amazing advice and experience um, support to a mentee um, and would definitely have the experience to do so but imposter syndrome may um may hold you back from wanting to apply in that way um and i think what's key here and how we may change the scheme um to sort of fit to this is that mentorship is a really lovely two-way street so we may well pair you um as a mentor and you'll be given a mentee but do not think for a moment that you're not going to be supported um, in this scheme too you're going to be mentoring your mentee and obviously giving them all the great advice and experience and knowledge that you've had um, in your in your career but you're going to get some wonderful insight from them too you know they're going to be from a, a different background they might be a different age group they might have different experience in a different sector of, of composition and or different area of the industry and, and different life experience so you will learn from each other and and what we hope for and this is sort of one of the drop down uh, questions we asked um in the application is what you want out of it and we'll really use that to try and match people with similar things so it was collaboration support and friendship was one of them because i think I you know this is such a brilliant community to have every monday and and when the mentor pairs start virtually meeting each other and hopefully one day in real life um, <laughs> we, want, we want that we want that friendship friendship element to be there and and to be honest this is we're doing this now because it's so crucial now but this is an infrastructure that many of us in the industry have wanted to have in place for such a long time um, you know actually someone's just mentioned on the chat here about being being in self-isolation always as a composer but but the need for support and the need for friendship there is is really important so um yeah hopefully we'll be able to make that happen for everyone every single person who applied i uh, i i think um as as we're talking and, and and obviously the um the the nature of the current situation is that is that ever more so nobody knows anything you know the who, who knows how you're supposed to respond to, to, to these kind of situations. Absolutely. Um, but I, I, I think out of everything that, that's come out as a, as a sort of, a, as, a, as an idea, I think the, the mentor scheme, the, the strengths that I, that I could see in this as a concept, if we can make it work okay, is that there, is, there would be a network effect of advice and support. And also if it becomes sort of decentralized so that it's not relying on any one person's singular energy, that there's a proper exchange of energy that, that goes around, then hopefully the scheme itself can, can be, be resilient. Because yeah. one of the things that I've noticed myself is that I tend to, um, I, I'm a, a, a visiting professor at, at Surrey University, but I never visit because I work all the time. And, and I feel that I don't kind of, um, I find it really hard to necessarily swap from one to the other, and consequently, I feel that I that I slightly let uh, let people down there a little bit. And 
and, and I think the idea, probably the same for, for a lot of composers, that they, they don't want to take on the responsibility of like formally either teaching or leading a scheme because they know mm -hmm. as soon as they get busy, they, they get sort of tunnel, tunnel vision. Whereas hopefully with something like this, where it's just, where it's a kind of a, a, a network of a singular relationships, or maybe as a couple of people have put on the, on the chat, uh, mentors looking after a couple of mentees. Um, I mean, we have uh, uh, quite a few people have, have mentioned that already. So that, that's in our, in our thoughts. Yeah. But um, I mean, do, do you have a, have a sense of um, what this might look like uh, as it, as it grows, what, what have been your experiences with the other uh, mentoring schemes? Did they uh, just shut up shop after a while or did they end up, end up continuing? Um, every scheme I've worked on before, we've actually given it a, a time period um, to work within. And then we usually do a sort of um, period of, of looking back and, and reflection on the, on the whole scheme and deciding whether to move forward or not. I would say um, from kickoff with this, let's maybe go for eight weeks um, and I think that's what we wrote on the initial form and then see how we go because um, you know we may all be in our homes much longer than that we don't know yeah. so um, yeah. but it is good to have a time frame in mind because it also gives you that time period at the end of the eight weeks to have a very honest conversation about how it's going and what both of you need from it and oh, um, what I can say um, in how it's a little bit more on how it's going to work is we are absolutely not going to have as many mentors a apply I think as we've had mentees because we've had some people want to be mentored and that is totally fine what we're going to be doing in the pairing process is something called peer-to-peer -peer mentorship to sort of um, all the people who've applied will be paired some may be paired in a traditional mentor mentee um, system like you would expect from a program like this but other people um, will be mentored peer-to-peer -peer mentor so you may find that you have very similar experience you definitely will hopefully be working in the same um sector of of the industry um or you may be based in the same place geographically um so but the great thing about peer-to-peer -peer mentorship is it's more of that support and friendship than necessarily the sort of sharing of experience from it yeah from it's, it's a different sort of power balance is that the right word um yeah, but no, yeah I, you'll I, both be support each other equally and, and actually i think that p the power conversation um is 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 one that that's worth having because there there's often a sense of um i mean just just reading the chat as uh, as you're speaking there's there's a sense of sort of like i see i've seen imposter syndrome written about <laughs> several several times down the side in terms of uh, experienced composers or even sort of composers let's say three to five years in not uh have not done it for 20 years who, who kind of feel that they would um themselves uh, uh by labeling themselves as a mentor that they're not confident to take that uh that label yeah. on and, and and i think actually it, it sort of mirrors what it's like coming out of uh, college or starting up writing music for a lot of people is that it takes most people a long time to just describe themselves as a composer you, when you when yeah. you say that you you're a composer at a party for the first time or it down the pub, it it is a weird feeling. It's a very weird, <laughs> strange thing. So I mean, I, maybe Harry, if I can just uh, I'll just draw your attention to a few of the questions that are popping up on the on the chat. Um, that uh, quite a few people saying, oh, you know, actually, where do we sign up? What would be a good account? I'm going to paraphrase it. What would be good accounts to follow on social media to keep in touch with this? And and the the composer wellbeing account feels composer like composer wellbeing. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write uh, write that down in, in case. So the composer and, and anything that um, we're talking about in the scheme will be yeah on the composer wellbeing collective. My account, your account, Michael, mine is yeah. the date. So. Um, but yeah, Composer Wellbeing Collective is a really good base place to, to check this out. And it's where all the sort of volunteers will be working on this together will congregate. Um, what you're saying, Michael, as well about the imposter syndrome thing, it's just that absolutely human um, realisation that no one really knows what they're doing. So bearing that in mind, it's how we support each other um, as human beings and using 
one's experience and one's truth to help someone else in, in any kind of given similar situation. So Definitely. it's, a, it's a really tricky thing. If you even begin to read into, um, any of the sort of research or even science behind imposter syndrome it's really really interesting in how how much it affects um <laughs> affects everyone in every single sector well, well um, I, yeah it, i think it i i, I it wouldn't surprise me at, at all in, in terms of whether you know whether people are talking about representation in the arts or you know what you uh you know it it, it sounds sounds trivial now i'm sitting in leafy north london but you know growing up in in a tiny little town in in West Yorkshire with absolutely no uh, media contact at all in terms of I didn't know anybody who, who made music or, or, or made any anything like film and TV then then there is an otherness which I think uh, the vast majority of people experience in some shape or form obviously some you know some uh, much more than others but, uh, but I think yeah. most people can can relate to that uh, to the otherness um, there's two, three people have asked about whether they can be both a mentor and a mentee. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that, that that's beyond the bounds of this. Uh, what, what, what do you think? We are making this up as we go I, along. Uh, the, so the way I would really like to do the, the pairing process right at the beginning is to to is to pair everyone um as soon as we can oh, i've got you got my garden instead um to see <laughs> pair everyone as soon as we can um and to to just make sure we're doing that what we've promised the bare minimum of everyone of everyone getting paired i absolutely think as well that um please be in touch with us if you feel like you're not maybe getting what you wanted or expected out of the pairing so that we can um, look at maybe giving you another partner too. Um, there is a, a really great system that I've done on other mentorship programs, which is what have we called it? The th throuple pair or the um, <laughs> three partner pair. Oh, um, keep it clean. And it's um, <laughs> that the, the there's a sort of senior mentor and then a mentor who's being mentored but also mentoring. Um, oh, I get you. Many, yeah. Many, and that's really nice too because that's really helpful and i know a couple of people have emailed and please do email if you're in the same boat if you've got any experience in mentoring before or you've been on a scheme as a mentee so you also have some really valuable experience there we may want you to be in that sort of system so that you can sh help share your advice Brilliant. Um, but also next week we're doing um, a training although maybe we'll if we're keeping this open longer we might have to do it on another date but a sort of training little session for um mentors to just give you some top tips uh, well actually as a mentee as well be knowing what to ask knowing what to expect not expecting too much is really crucial and also giving you a bit of tips on we know that the first session might be a little bit awkward so we can give you some ice breaking <laughs> some questions that sort of thing there's uh what what's that card game that everybody plays now that uh, is very rude catherine you must have played that surely Against <laughs> humanity. Yes, exactly. Surely a game of that. That is that's the exactly. best way to. Like that. That's like the that. best way to start. I think so. Um, it's all about friendship in the end. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so just to just to kind of uh, uh, round round up the the mentor scheme just for now. Clearly, the, there are as many questions as answers right now, and that's to be expected in um, at this point in the scheme. Um, just to say, from a from a personal point of view, uh, I. I'm kind of working on the um, uh, the principle that trying to do one thing well right now is better than trying to do lots and lots of things uh, in a in a too spread out kind of way. Um, yeah. So I I did say I said last week I think on the on the chat that I was going to do a midweek Q and A session and and it turns out that that's too much in terms of family commitments and looking after toddlers and babies and things. But also, I think I'm going to carry on doing this Monday chat as the sort of cornerstone, but then also committing to the mentorship scheme. And those are the, the things that I personally am going to be involved with. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm committing to the to the eight weeks on that in, in whatever way uh, I can. I can yeah. So, so that, yeah. will be, that will be. Key Should key we run key. through some? some dates as well because i know there's a couple of people asking about when oh yeah yeah Perfect. About everything. so um, we are now keeping open until wednesday lunchtime let's let's say midday uk time is the cutoff for applications um and then we'll, we want a week to pair you 
April. So that will be delayed a little bit. So it'll be uh, Wednesday, the 8th of April. You will have been notified who your pair, pair is, your pair partner is by then. Um, and then I guess we will do the uh, training session on either the 6th or the 8th. Michael, we should discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. um, yeah, and then and then we'll kick off the eight weeks from then. Great. And there's been yeah. a few a few questions about uh, whether or not there there's a uh, an automated confirmation of of application. I, I there I, is I, not. Sorry. The, but the, I know that. <laughs> ex yes, exactly. I th I think in general, do do assume that 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 when you've sent something to us, where uh, Harry and I are trying to uh, trying to make sure that people don't fall through the net but if you uh, feel Absolutely. that you have done uh, just send one of us a, a message and that will be yeah and, and and we've honestly they're all flooding in on um, the application form so right. we've got you all and also lots of people have emailed with additional info or what they swap to be a mentor or something so um, we'll yeah. get back to you or if you've signed up just on the form you are there so don't worry um, and we'll repost that on Twitter too for everybody Fantastic. Actually, if somebody has got the link to, to hand, uh, it was posted oh, up. <laughs> it was posted <laughs> up the street. Meanwhile, I'm going to go back to Catherine uh, because she's been uh, very patiently listening to us bang on about uh, about mentoring <laughs> for a long time. Uh, Catherine, I'm going to come back to to the question where we started today, which was the uh, a, a, the question from the from the up and comers from the from uh, and and as I said, this is a question sent actually directly to Carly after last week's uh, session of, from someone who was saying that they were uh, worried that they were still in that part of their career that hasn't quite taken off just yet, but this year was really starting to feel like things were happening. Uh, if that were you, what would, what would you be doing right now? Do you have a, two or three things that, that you'd be filling your time with if you, if you felt that you'd stalled, but it'd been looking really promising? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's really tricky and, you know, there isn't, you know, the answer. I would say keep on writing music, um, ultimately, <laughs> um, you know, if you have found that, you know, you're getting a certain type of project, um, for a particular sound, you know, develop, try and develop your body of work to improve your show reel, you know, just keep on writing and 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 doing that side of things um yeah as i say like we don't really know how this is gonna turn out you know at the moment we're in that kind of hoping things are still gonna happen it depends how long we're in this lockdown whether things will be in production um you know certain things you know like animation for example isn't really being affected at all there's a few animation projects that i know it's you know just going ahead with their same schedules as they were before so you know those kind of projects might be coming up so i just think keep you know keep on writing keep on um yeah kind of developing developing yourself i think but yeah i don't have a have an answer i don't think <laughs> um, well, um, um, exactly but, i mean uh, if i can just uh, just um uh follow up on that point about keep writing i think one of the things that um for, for me as as uh, been a an absolute kind of cornerstone over the years has has been uh, developing a practice and that kind of word obviously means different things to different people if you do yoga if you do meditation if you do piano practice if you do whatever your thing is but for composers i think it's it's interesting that that is what uh, you fall back on. I was uh, chatting to to Nick Hill that uh, that works with me this morning, and was saying that this is kind of like what it's like between jobs in many ways. Anyway, you fall back on on your practice, whatever that is. And I, I are you finding that the idea of of artists rather than just sort of working composers is uh, still as strong in your experience as, as it's as it's always been that, that the filmmakers are looking for artists right now yeah absolutely i mean um 
people hire composers for numerous different reasons, but the, you know, there's either a pre-existing relationship with a composer or your work gets you work. And whether that is somebody watching a film that you've scored or a TV show that you've scored and goes, I really want that for my show or my film, or whether people are just listening to music, whether they've got a Spotify playlist and they hear a piece of music and go, that's the sound to my film, then, you know, that can be a way in as well. Um, so having music out there um, and, you know, available can get you that that break. Um, obviously, Michael, as you cross those, both of those areas and have, have done for a number of years, as you'll know, you know, your um, Erased Tapes EP work can be as valuable as having done Sherlock. Yeah. Actually, the combination of those is, is, is you know, yeah. a killer. Um, yeah. But, you know, getting that, that interest um, can, can be that thing. You know, people do want, you know, pe people go down different, different routes of what kind of music they want. And, yeah, so if you can keep making your own music, and I think it's so important um, to have your own sound, whatever sound that is in a more kind of traditional film or TV composer scoring sound, or whether it's a more artist sound, you know, having that thing that identifies it as you is the most valuable thing that you can have as the composer. So, you know, if you're kind of early on in your career and you're kind of not sure what your sound is, but you're finding that, you know, you're getting hired to do a certain thing, then really hone that and make that your thing. Um, Obviously, it's one of those things you always want to have your sound, but and then you have to kind of go down whichever avenue that that project might take. So you have to be versatile. But, you know, to get your foot in the door initially, you know, there's no point on sounding like, you know, going, here's a hands in the sand like, here's my John Williams sound like. <laughs> you know, there's no point in having that have you. Um, and, you know, that might mean that you're not suitable for a certain project but would hopefully mean that you're you know going to get your foot in the door quicker on something um where you know you have your own identity so that would be advice. And brilliant, <laughs> ad brilliant <laughs> advice it is too I, I i just i would sort of triple com uh, confirm that sense of um i think because because as composers we get we inevitably respond, we're responsive in that you do what you get asked to do. And so sometimes your body of work can be quite, uh, quite confusing and quite messy. Also, on the other hand, it, I think, I personally think it's, it's your practice that generates the, the core that is your sound or you as an artist. And uh, um, I think we're all gonna have plenty of time to, to practice in the next few months. Uh, Harriet, I'm just going to come to you just before we just before we close. Uh, is there anything else that you want to chip in a, apart from sign up for the mentor mentorship scheme? Any other top tips for today? No, I, I totally agree with what both of you uh, have just said. I think now's the sort of time for content. The cons the consumers and the customers are there for content, and um, we've never been more online than we are in these past few weeks, and how we will continue to be in the next few weeks. So I think if you ever ever you know be nervous about releasing music that you've got prepared now is the absolute time just yeah, just go for it um but also i'm going to completely contradict myself now <laughs> Good. Um, if you are struggling to find any inspiration or things to write about i think also appreciating that this is a really hard time for a lot of people yeah, um, and, and i think i sort of see it so much on social media there's this sort of um pressure to be creative and make the most of it you don't have to make the most of it if you want to if you're having a bad day and you you just want to sit in your pjs you are perfectly entitled to do that so it's also about giving giving ourselves a bit of um a bit of headspace and a bit of time um because we're not doing as many of the things that we love or seeing all the people that we love so yeah it ebbs it, and flows it ebbs and flows absolutely beautiful place to uh, to wrap up um so thank you for everybody that's uh, that's taken an hour out to come and um, and participate in this uh, i'll be chopping up the video and popping it on uh, youtube i'm desperately trying not to touch my face it's basically impossible it's so hard I, my glasses <laughs> slip down my nose and i scratch my chin all day every day so i i'm sorry i i'm trying um so uh we will be doing this every monday 
3 p.m. It's now BST, British Summer Time. Sorry for putting uh, Greenwich Mean Time, which probably means that uh, some people haven't seen this, but uh, I'll chop this up later tonight and tomorrow morning, put it on YouTube so that we can catch up. Um, if you want to uh, check in with any of the, uh, the the text from the chat, everything that's been on here will, will go on my website and I'll post a link to that on Twitter. Um, and so do keep in touch. We'll endeavor to work as hard as we can on the... Um, on the mentorship scheme and uh, and maybe if we could just say thank you uh, Claire Jarvis uh, left us uh, rightly to go and go and get us all some more money earlier on but maybe if we can uh, possibly say say goodbye to Catherine thank you very much thank you Catherine Hi. amazing <laughs> hopefully see you again soon on one of these uh, and also to, to Harriet too thanks very much stay well. stay thank well. you very much and finally uh, Thanks very much, everybody. Uh, stay safe, stay well, look after your families, and uh, I'll see you in one week's time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.